Welcome to Module 2, where you'll learn why and how Read It Once Again supports repetition and brain development. The conception of Read It Once Again began in 1997 by Ray Shaper, who was a very frustrated teacher of preschool children with special needs. She could not find an appropriate curriculum for her children, and most of the materials were too advanced and did not meet their language needs. She was teaching to their IEP goals, but the skills were taught in isolation with materials that were not especially motivating for the children or for her as a teacher. There was a child named Rashad in her classroom, and he was the inspiration for the Read It Once Again curriculum. Rashad would demand that she read to him. She loved reading to her students, but in this case, there were problems. One problem was that Rashad wanted her to read the very same book to him every single morning. It was the Berenstein Bears Go to School. Another problem was that she didn't have the time to read the entire book. Her mornings were busy with buses arriving and children coming into the classroom. Her solution was to skip words and even certain pages to finish the book more quickly, but Rashad demanded that she go back and read the entire book as he had it memorized. That triggered her to remember that her own typically developing children had requested the same book to be repeated over and over when they were preschoolers. In fact, they wanted the same books, songs, and movies to be repeated until they had them memorized. Was repetition a normal stage of development for most preschoolers? If so, Rashad's requests for the repeated readings of the Berenstain Bears was very appropriate. That brought other questions to mind. Was repetition of phase linked to the brain development of preschool children? And why was Rashad the only child in her classroom who thrived on repetition? Why didn't the other children in her class have the same desire for repeating the same stories? Of course, there are many possible answers to that question. Some children were not exposed to books at home. Other children did not have attention spans to remain focused on the entire story. And some children lacked foundational skills that allowed them to identify objects or characters in the story. In the end, she concluded that she needed to do some research about brain development and the link to repetition. The slide you're looking at now shows four PET scanned images of a brain at different ages of development. On each slide, you will notice black spots in every image. The black spots indicate brain activity. The first slide is of an infant only five days old. That baby has little interaction with the world and spends most of the day eating and sleeping. There are minimal black images showing activity in the brain. The next box to the right is an image from a two-month-old baby. At this stage of development, the baby's eyesight has improved and become much more aware of the environment around him. You can see by the amount of black that the brain is more active and receptive to taking in new information. The lower box in the left corner is where we need to focus our attention. This represents children one through five years of age. These are the children in your classroom. Here is where the brain is most active and seeks to interact with the environment. You can see that this stage contains the most black matter with active brain cells. This is the window of opportunity where the brain is ripe for acquiring as much information as possible. The last box on the lower right side is the brain of a 28 year old person. You can see that there's a good amount of black activity with the ability to learn, but not nearly the same as the child with the one to five year old window of opportunity. During this window of opportunity, the preschool brain is most active and primed to be exposed to stimulus, creating thousands and thousands of new neural pathways. Remember the PET images of the brain of the one to five year old child? The black images indicate that the brain was extremely active and curiously exploring all aspects of his environment. He is being exposed to hundreds of new concepts and pieces of information every day. Each time the brain is introduced to a new bit of information, it creates a new neural pathway for information as a highway to travel to the brain. It is possible that hundreds of new neural pathways can be created in just one day. Soon, the brain is overloaded with neural pathways and unable to process all the information that's traveling in the brain. You can see that some neural pathways are like thick ropes and others are thin and more thread-like. The brain is biologically programmed to keep important selected neural pathways and prune away the other neural pathways that are less necessary. But how does the brain instinctively know which neural pathways to keep and which to delete? Here's the reason that repetition is such an important piece of the puzzle. Every time you repeat a concept or skill, the neural pathway becomes thicker and thicker. 
The brain recognizes the thick neural pathway as being more important and will retain them while it will automatically prune away thinner pathways. Repetition strengthens and thickens these pathways and helps children to retain and process these neural pathways, supporting foundational skills. Some children with language delays require more repetition than others. Here's another way of explaining how new information is processed in the brain. Pretend that the day your students enter your classroom, their brains are similar to an empty filing cabinet. Each time you introduce an idea, fact, or concept, the brain creates a new manila file folder or neural pathway that must be processed or filed appropriately if it's going to be easily found and used again in the future. Children with language delays have a difficult time placing and organizing these file folders in their filing cabinets. Placing file folders in the filing cabinet is called receptive language. This is when information is being placed and processed in the brain. Here is where they begin to experience problems. Often children with language delays are exposed to too much information at one time. The information comes too quickly and it's not repeated often enough. Directions or information are often presented with only auditory instructions. Children with language delays thrive on visual cues or pictures. At this stage they are visual learners. The inability to place or organize their manila folders into the filing cabinet result in what often looks like behavior problems. The frustrated child will either shut down or will explode with tantrums and angry outbursts. Here's where repetition and visual cues play a critical part in the Read It Once Again curriculum teaching strategies. First, by repeating the same book, the child is not overwhelmed with new vocabulary. The words and phrases become familiar, and because they are repeated, those neural pathways are strengthened. Appropriate foundational skills are combined with familiar words. The brain begins to gain the ability to organize the manila folders in the filing cabinet. They're now better able to begin processing receptive information. Continued use of repetition and visual cues will strengthen the child's ability to process information and organize their manila folders in their filing cabinets. Once this organization process is mastered, you will begin to notice an increase in appropriate expressive language. Some will begin to label objects, others can answer questions with simple words or phrases. Each child will demonstrate different levels of progress according to their ability to organize the manila folders in their filing cabinets. Some children will require more repetition than others. We've discussed the importance of using repetition and visual cues to help children process language, but we also need to remember that there are other factors that interfere with learning and language development. More and more children are entering the classroom with a variety of sensory issues. These include taste, sight, smell, sound, touch, and motion. Because children are not always able to tell us what they're feeling, we are not aware of their issues. Most of us are born with sensory filters that keep our brains from being overstimulated. Unfortunately, too many children for a number of reasons are being born with defective filters and in some cases no filters at all. A child with sensitive eyes may have trouble going into places with fluorescent lighting. They are actually aware of the flickering given off by the tubular lights. Children who are sensitive to sound may hear things such as a fan or air conditioning unit outside their classroom. For them, the sound is magnified and they're unable to ignore or filter the noise. We've experienced many children who are sensitive to touch, especially if someone uses an unexpected light touch from behind. So we suggest approaching a child face to face, offering a firm handhold rather than a light unexpected tap on the shoulder. You will observe at snack time that many children have an adverse reaction to different tastes and textures of food. We also advise teachers never to wear perfume in the classroom. Did you ever step into an elevator with a person who has drenched themselves with their favorite fragrance? You can't wait to step off the elevator and get some fresh air. Even though the fragrance of your soap, body wash, or hairspray may seem mild or non-existent to you, it can be overwhelming to a child with a sensitive sense of smell. The last sensory component is one that you may not think about, but it's the sense of motion. This affects their ability to maintain balance and be in control of their gross motor skills. It's not unusual for some children to have more than one sensory issue going on at the same time. 
because they're not often able to verbally express what they're feeling, we need to use our observation skills to identify what triggered a particular behavior. A good resource for classroom teachers to learn more about sensory integration is from your occupational therapist. Most therapists have training in this area. Read It Once Again's strategy of repetition and use of visual cues will help children make great gains in the area of receptive and expressive language and improve their ability to communicate their needs. The lack of language skills combined with sensory challenges can affect the child's ability to process new information, listen, respond to requests, participate in social situations, remain calm and control their behavior, filter out other sensory stimulation, and maintain a calm and ready-to-work state of mind. Visual cues and repetition help children organize information to be successful in all areas of learning. Our goal is to provide a calm learning environment and eliminate unnecessary anxiety. Read It Once Again provides repetition which fosters familiarity. It adds structure and predictability which can have a positive effect on the child's ability to cope with sensory issues. For children with delays, begin by exposing them to the amount of language that they are able to process. More is not always better. Many teachers have been instructed with theories that teach it is necessary to immerse young children that have language delays with as much language as possible and expose them to a large variety of diverse learning activities. The focus is on helping the child catch up and develop as much language as quickly as possible. This strategy is great for typically developing children like Brittany who already has the skills to process language and can independently explore her environment where she will gain and retain information. This is where Read It Once Again's teaching strategies differ from traditional methods of teaching. If children like Matthew, Pedro, Tyler, or Amanda could process language like Brittany, they would not be exhibiting language delays and have difficulty retaining foundational skills. They need a different approach with techniques that will give them the skills to process language and retain foundational skills. Read It Once Again uses repetition along with a controlled vocabulary to meet each child at their individual language level and provide the techniques to help them build foundational skills to meet their highest potential. Here's the perfect example of why some children with language delays shut down or show signs of frustration with outbursts. This teacher has chosen to teach a unit about farm animals. Every day a book is read that correlates with the theme. Typically developing children such as Brittany will thrive in this environment. Matthew, Pedro, Tyler, and Amanda will be completely overwhelmed with the amount of new and unfamiliar vocabulary. Their filing cabinet is a mess with manila folders all over the floor because they're overwhelmed with too much information. Read it once again's teaching strategies. Begin by assessing your child's language levels and controlling the amount of vocabulary that they are exposed to during story time. Choose storybooks with enough text to challenge but not overwhelm them. Repeating the story will help them become familiar with the simple words and phrases. Throughout the month their vocabulary will build. Our focus is to help the child progress to their highest potential, but instead of bombarding them with too much language that they are not able to process, we begin with a controlled vocabulary, giving them the skills to process language and continually grow the vocabulary and foundational skills throughout the year. Read It Once Again is going to redefine the meaning of repetition when it's used with literature and foundational skills. Do not confuse repetition with drilling. Drilling is boring, but Read It Once Again does not encourage children to just echo words in isolation. The words and phrases are taken from the storybook and connected to acquiring foundational skills. Read It Once Again's definition of repetition is Repeat language and foundational skills in every domain and in every situation throughout the entire classroom. Here is a quick example of how you might include vocabulary and foundational skills throughout your classroom for the story based on the three bears. The foundational skills featured are big and little. Props used to practice the vocabulary are found in different areas of your classroom. At snack time, the children can choose and eat porridge out of a big bowl or a little bowl. Offer big and little spoons. 
The dramatic corner has a big chair and a little chair. Use different sized bears in the reading corner. All of these props can be used during story time and be incorporated to teach big and little as the book is being read. Just reading the same story without planned instruction every day is boring. Repeated reading of the same story is good, but the success of using the Read It Once Again program depends on the teacher's pre-planning of which foundational skill will be addressed as the story is being read. The foundational skill chosen will depend on the language ability of each child. For example, the foundational skill for one day might be color identification. As the story is being read, children will be asked to find different colored objects on each page. One child will be able to name the color, while another child might need a visual cue to match the colors. For example, the teacher shows a picture of an orange bowl, which can be found in the sequencing cards, and asks the child if they can point to another orange bowl in the book. It's the teacher's responsibility to know the language level of each child and prepare the activity with the appropriate props necessary to teach that skill. The foundational skills may be rotated from day to day, but lower functioning children may need the same skill repeated several days in a row. It's also possible to combine foundational skills to keep higher functioning children motivated. The key is to know your students' language levels and prepare which foundational skills you will be teaching in advance so that you have the appropriate props and activities at your fingertips during story time. In each Read It Once Again unit, you will find a Music and Rhyme tab. In this section, you'll find a different Mother Goose rhyme that correlates with the storybook. There are other rhymes and finger plays found in the section as well. Repetition of the storybook is good, but we strongly recommend that you repeat the Mother Goose rhyme each day as well. Mother Goose is an extremely powerful tool that uses repetition, rhyme, and rhythm to reinforce speech patterns and language concepts. The only thing more powerful than Mother Goose rhymes and repetition is when you add music. Music is the superglue that helps children retain rhyming words and phrases. Written music is provided with each Mother Goose rhyme, but you can easily find recorded versions of musical Mother Goose rhymes on the internet or on CDs. As teachers of children with language delays, we tend to be focused on teaching children as much vocabulary as possible and find ourselves drilling them by using objects or picture cards hoping to increase their speech. Once you begin to use Mother Goose rhymes, you will find that children are much more engaged with language because they like to experiment with nonsense sounds and silly words. Mother Goose allows children to play along with the sounds of language. The rhymes are typically short and rhythmic, which helps to keep them focused. Module 5 will provide you with more information about using Mother Goose along with our literacy units. What is the best way to provide an effective, language-rich environment? Read It Once Again has proven this to be an effective formula for providing a language-rich environment. Choose one book, repeat the story, and incorporate language and foundational skills using the vocabulary in the story. And in addition to the storybook, add rhyme and rhythm with Mother Goose. Most of us have been taught that because our students have language delays, you need to expose them to as many different books as possible. Read It Once Again does support that children should be exposed to a variety of books, but we need to look at how you use literature in the classroom. Let's use an example of Ray when she was a new teacher of children with language delays. She decided she was going to teach a fun theme based on bears. The first day she read Corduroy to her class. The next day she read Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear. The third day she read Bear Numbers. Each day she read a different book about bears. Her children did not pay attention during story time and she experienced many behavior problems. After the first week, she discovered that she had overwhelmed her children with way too many new characters, words, and concepts. She had not allowed them to process all of the new information. Their manila file folders were jumbled in the filing cabinets and laying all over the floor. It was at this point that she knew she needed to change her teaching strategies. 
Luckily, Rashad had reminded her about the power of repetition. This was the beginning of Read It Once Again. Ray discovered that if she repeated the same book every day during story time, the vocabulary within the story remained the same and became predictable. Her students soon learned the names of characters and objects. Their manila folders were beginning to become organized in the filing cabinets. Receptive language had improved, and she was seeing an increase in expressive language. She still had a variety of related reading materials in the book corner, and she informally read different books throughout the day, but corduroy was read during story time every day. Ray saw her students make incredible progress with their receptive and expressive language. So she decided to take the repeated reading concept one step further. She created an entire curriculum unit based on one story. She used the familiar objects and characters to begin teaching foundational skills. Module 3 will go into more detail about the contents of each unit and how she includes foundational skills. Here is another Read It Once Again formula for success. Read the same book at the same time for X number of weeks. The question mark is determined by these two factors, the age and the ability of the child. Younger children, or those with lower cognitive abilities, should plan to spend a month on each storybook unit. Most three and four-year-olds with language delays can easily spend one month on each storybook unit. If you are using this curriculum for an entire class of typically developing children, you can shorten the time period to meet their needs. Whether you're repeating the story for one month, two months, or two weeks, these are the phases of development illustrating how children acquire and master foundational skills with language. Step 1. Acquire new information. First, they must be exposed to new language and concepts. At this stage, they are attempting to put manila folders into their filing cabinet. Repetition is very important as they are working on getting these folders organized in that filing cabinet so that they can progress to the second step. Step 2. Store and organize information. At this point, children will begin to use expressive language and will experiment with verbally identifying characters and objects from the story. Some will answer questions with simple one-word answers. Others will be able to use combinations of words and phrases. Congratulations! Your students have mastered some new foundational skills along with increasing their expressive speech. It seems logical that you should now move on to the new story, but then we would leave out this last important phase. Step 3. Step 3. Retrieve and practice vocabulary and skills. The final week is where children have the opportunity to practice both receptive and expressive skills, reinforcing neural pathways and adding super organization to their filing cabinets. This is a good example of a class that used curriculum units based on Brown Bear, Brown Bear. We read the same book for an entire month, the children made great gains in language and vocabulary. They made remarkable progress acquiring some of the basic foundational skills. And our book for the next month is Big Red Barn. They began their second unit, the Big Red Barn, and it seemed as though the children had forgotten most of all of the foundational skills that they had learned the month before in the Brown Bear unit. What in the world happened? What happened? This is an example of a foundational growth chart showing how children with language delays gain foundational skills throughout the year. With each new book, your children are exposed to new language and vocabulary. Their focus is now on the need to process these new words. This means adding more manila folders to their filing cabinet. They have not lost all the progress from the foundational skills acquired from the previous unit, but combining these foundational skills with new language will create a temporary setback. Notice that each time you introduce a new story, you will see a decline in foundational skills. You will also note that you see a steady growth of gains and improvement of foundational skills at the end of each new story as well. Throughout the year, you will see less decline and more improvement. We created this visual to help you understand how your students process language so that you will not be discouraged if you notice a decline in some of the foundational skills at the beginning of each unit. This slide reinforces the fact that Read It Once Again does not teach foundational skills in isolation. 
by repeating foundational skills in every unit, your students are able to generalize skills and concepts in a variety of stories or situations. They will be able to apply the foundational skills appropriately in daily life experiences. Each child will process language and foundational skills in a different way and at a different rate. Many typically developing children, such as Brittany, can be exposed to new vocabulary and foundational skills at the same time and apply them appropriately to a variety of situations with minimal repetition. Tyler, our at-risk child, will require a good amount of repetition of foundational skills in the beginning, but will eventually catch on quickly and make progress. At the beginning of the year, we questioned whether or not Pedro was on the autism spectrum. At some point, he will have mastered some foundational skills in a setting using familiar words and props from the same story. He will require foundational skills to be reinforced in every story and will acquire the ability to process language along with foundational skills. Every time you introduce a new story to Amanda, our child with intellectual delays, or Matthew, who is on the autism spectrum, their filing cabinets will be bombarded with new vocabulary and concepts. It will sometimes be difficult for them to process new words and apply them to some of the foundational skills that they appear to have mastered the month before. Repetition of vocabulary and foundational skills is critical for both children. Read It Once Again repeats foundational skills in every unit. Children are given the chance to generalize these foundational skills in a variety of situations by introducing a new book with different vocabulary, illustrations, and concepts. Acquisition of foundational skills steadily grows throughout the year with consistency. Repetition is such an important part of the Read It Once Again teaching strategies that we would like to quickly highlight some of the facts that were covered in this module. Repetition strengthens neural pathways to the brain, ensuring that important information can be retained and recalled to be used for receptive and expressive language. Repetition allows the brain an opportunity to organize and file manila folders or neural pathways so that the receptive information can be more easily retrieved and initiates expressive language. Preschool children from the age of 1 to 5 are considered to be in the window of opportunity for learning. This is the period of development when the brain is the most active and receptive to gathering new information. It is during this developmental stage that we must focus on fostering receptive language to expand expressive language. Read It Once Again uses repetition of familiar vocabulary to create predictability within the classroom. When children are able to predict the outcomes of activities related to language and foundational skills, it provides a level of comfort that relieves anxiety. Trying to teach a child who is hungry is very similar to trying to teach a child with anxiety. It is very difficult for that child to focus on any activity when they are in a state of anxiety. Repetitious reading reinforces the 20 foundational speech and language skills necessary for early learning success. When children are able to predict familiar words and phrases, they become focused on the story and this increases their attention span. One different mother goose rhyme is included in each unit. Read It Once Again encourages teachers to repeat the rhyme each day. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition is an extremely powerful tool for developing both receptive and expressive language skills. If you use music to sing your rhymes, it provides even more strength to the neural pathways. In addition to teaching language and foundational skills, Read It Once Again's mission is to promote the love of books and reading at a very young age. It is our passion to create lifelong readers. Repetition of language and foundational skills helps children accomplish success. It creates positive self-esteem. The I can do it attitude is a powerful motivating tool that fuels the momentum for continued success. Read me a story. Please read it once more. I can learn from reading, and I'm not even four. The words are in rhythm, and sometimes they rhyme. Say them over and over, please, just one more time. Congratulations. You've completed Read It Once Again supports repetition and brain development, Module 2. 
And now you're ready to advance to overview of Read It Once Again curriculum unit strategies for teaching foundational skills, Module 3. This segment will help you select the appropriate curriculum storybook units to best fit the needs of your children in the classroom. Module 3 will also guide you through the Super 20 foundational skills and show you where they are found in each unit with a sample of common activities that consistently address the foundational skills. This ends Module 2.